Right now is the best time to get started with machine learning in Unity. ML Agents 1.0 just released. The syntax you learn from now on will probably not change drastically in the future and the installation process has never been easier. No matter your experience level, with this video you will be able to build your first AI. I promise. Let's get going. I assume you have installed Unity already. You can pretty much use any Unity version you like. It has to be at least 2018.4. So you probably already have the correct version. We will start by creating a new empty 3D project. Open up the package manager window, make sure preview packages is enabled and install ML agents. Yes, ML agents can be installed via the package manager. This is great news. As we are going to start with the basic example provided by Unity, we have to download their repository as well. The examples are not included in the package. Unity, if you are listening right now, having the samples optionally included in the package manager, like in the case of the VFX graph for example, would be neat. Just clone the ML agents repository with your preferred method. I am just downloading it straight from GitHub. Check out the description for the link. Decompress and open the downloaded repo, open up the assets folder under project and simply drag the ML agents folder into the editor. Now, under examples you can find the 3D ball scene. If we open it up, press play, we can see it is already working with the pre-trained machine learning model by Unity. This is nice. The simplicity of this framework really is its biggest strength. As you can see, the blue agents are balancing the ball pretty much perfectly. This behavior is not hard-coded. It is learned. Don't worry, we will train our own version of this shortly. Now, let's dive in a bit deeper and check out how this thing works. There are 12 agents in the scene. They are pretty much identical and just used to speed up and stabilize training. If we open it, we can see it contains a child game object called Agent. This is where the magic happens. The two important scripts on this game object are the behavior parameter script and the ball 3D agent script. In the ML agents framework, agents are the actors and the behavior they are linked to determines how they act. An agent requires a behavior to function, but it is also possible for multiple agents to be linked to the same behavior, which comes in very handy in many situations. The agent is responsible for collecting observations, executing actions and assigning rewards. The behavior, on the other hand, receives the collected observations and rewards and is responsible for determining the action to execute. There are many ways of setting up your agents and many more ways to train them, which all drastically change the outcome, but more on this later. Let's start with what we see in the behavior script. There are vector observations and vector actions. Don't be confused by the language used here. It is a bit different than Unity's usual language because they adopted the wording of the machine learning community. A vector in the Unity way of thinking is just a list or an array of floats. The space size determines the length of the list. So a vector observation with a space size of 8 is just a float array that can fit 8 elements. We can also stack these observations, meaning that we wait until a number of observations have accumulated until we send them off to the neural network. This can be useful because data from multiple time frames could be used to infer new information. What do I mean? For example, a single position just captures one point in time. But two positions from different points in time could be used to infer things like direction, velocity or accelerations. This is what the stacked vectors parameter describes. The number of observations that are collected until it is sent off. It's a simple slider with a big impact, so it's really important to know what it is doing. The vector action has two types, continuous and discrete. 
Again, in unit terms, continuous is basically a float with numbers ranging from minus 1 to 1 and everything in between to a certain precision. And discrete is an integer. What you choose here just depends on the type of game you have. Discrete numbers are used to encode different decisions like 1 is for going a tile up and 2 is for going left and so on. With continuous numbers, the decisions are more fine-grained, for example, the force used to throw a ball. If we quickly jump into the Ball3D agent script, we can see the same numbers reflected there. For our observations, we have a space size of 8. We are adding two angles, which are both floats, a position and a velocity, which are both vector3 objects, so they are containing three floats each, making it eight floats in total. The process of selecting the observations is very important. Don't ever rush it. Next, the model and behavior type is specified. In this case, there's already a model attached because Unity has trained one. You can leave this empty until training is done if you are training your own model. There are three types of behavior. This is really important. First, we have heuristic, which is the classic way AI in games work. Programmers think of ways the AI should behave and hard code them in. It can work very well, but it has problems to adapt in ever-changing and complex environments. And of course, machine learning is also more fun. This is the next point, learning behavior. This is what we are after. This is when the AI is currently trained using machine learning. During training, a neural network model gets generated in order to use this generated model, after the training is finished, the last behavior is used, which is called inference, where the learned model is applied but not changed, meaning the AI won't learn. If we choose default, it will basically try to use the learning behavior. If we don't have the external Python training process attached, like right now, it tries to use the model attached to it for inference. If no model is specified, it will fall back to using heuristics. The team ID is only relevant if you want to use the same behavior on multiple agents playing against each other, like you can see in the soccer example. Let's go into the Ball3D agent script. We won't cover this script in full detail, because the specific implementation is not really the important part here. We will focus on the initialize, collect observations, on action received and on episode begin methods. These are all inherited from the agent class. If you would create your own agent, you would also let your script inherit from agent. Though it is also possible to use the base agent class by itself, but inheriting is my preferred way. You can check out the basic example if you want to see a way of doing that. The first method to override is the initialize method. This will be called when the game object gets enabled. If you are familiar with Unity, this is happening in between the awake and start function. Here you usually find and connect references and set parameters, but in the background more is going on. We have to take a look in the base class for that. You can see the agent connects to its behavior, possible sensors and to the academy. The academy is also a very important component of the ML agents frameworks, besides agents and behaviors. And some of you may have been wondering where it is. In previous versions, the academy was attached to a game object, but now it is a globally accessible singleton. The academy controls the training process for all agents. It communicates to the external Python process and ensures that all agents are in sync. Additionally, global parameters can be set here and are accessible by all agents. The next method is collect observations and it is very easy to use. Everything your AI needs to make a useful decision is collected here. Next, the onActionReceived method is where you transform the action parameters into concrete action. Everything your AI does in terms of moving, jumping, shooting, whatever, is located here. At last, we have the onEpisodeBegin method. An episode lasts until the objective has either been achieved 
or failed. And the environment needs to be reset. In this case, an episode lasts until the ball has fallen. This pretty much concludes everything you need to know for training your first AI. Let us begin the training process. Now we need to install Python and the Unity ML Agent Python package. We will just use our CPU for training for now, because it is just easier to set up and it's enough for this case. First download and install Python. Again, you can find the link for this in the description. Then if Python is installed, all you have to do is a simple pip3 install ML agents and you are done. No more installing. Now change directory into the previously downloaded repo and execute the following command. Again, you can find this command in the descriptions. Wait for a few seconds. If everything went as expected, the message start training by pressing the play button in the Unity editor should appear. And this is exactly what we do. You can see the AI is training. Congratulations, right now you are training your own AI. As you can see, getting started with the ML Agents framework is really easy. Of course, there are complex concepts you need to grasp to master this framework. But this is for another video. If this was helpful to you, please subscribe. I'm trying to make more videos. I know I have been slacking off in the last few months, but I'm trying my best to get started again. Please give me feedback and tell me what you want to see. Peace.